All right, and up next, let's take a look at the form data API, which is an awesome interface that we can use to construct a set of key value pairs representing form fields and their values. Now, before we begin, since form data API has quite a few methods and options available, and since I don't want this video to be extremely long, yes, during this video, I will copy and paste some code. As always, if you need a reference to the source code, I will leave the GitHub link in the description. So forms. Typically, if you have a form with, let's say, three values, what can you do? Well, we can navigate back to app.js. We can select the form. And as you can see, in this case, I'm using classes. Then we can grab all the inputs. We add the event listener. We're listening for submit events. We prevent the default. And then we first grab the inputs. In there, there's a value property. We possibly check for an empty ones, then do something. In this case, I'm just console logging. But normally, this is where we connect to the server or do some other awesome things. And at the very end, we can clear out the values. Now, all of this is awesome. But what if I have 15 inputs? Essentially, I need to repeat all of these steps. And this is where forum data truly shines because it allows us to right away select basically all of them. And the way it works, we still select the form and then we have two options. If you want, you can pass directly the element in the new form data. Or since in the callback we have access to event, we can also pass in the current target. Remember when it comes to current target, it always points to the main element to which we attach the listener. And once I click submit, notice over here, this is not a mistake. Basically, this is what we get back. So don't freak out. All of this is correct. Now, if we expand this, notice over here, these are all the cool methods that we can use with form data API. And first, let's see how we can access the values. And the gotcha here is following effectively when it comes to form data, it returns an array of arrays. So basically, if I have three inputs, I'll have an array, and then each input is going to be represented with that array, with key, as well as the value. And then we have multiple ways how we can access. If we want to get both, we go with dot entries. So basically, in here, I'm spreading it out and setting up a new array. And of course, we can also do it for just values and the keys. So in here, once I click notice, like I said, first of all, we get this array of arrays. So effectively, each input in here is going to have that key, as well as the value. And then if I just want the values, I do the same thing, I go with form data, and then the values. And yes, basically, we need to spread this out and then set it in a new array. And of course, the same works with the keys. Now, we also have this option, where essentially, I can iterate over it with a for off loop. So notice here, I go with four. And in here, I destructure both of these values out of the form data, and then whatever I want to do with them. Again, in this case, I'm just setting name equal to a value. Now there's another way how we can select the value. And that is essentially by using get method. So I go with form data. So whatever I'm getting back, then get and then whatever is the name on that input. So since I want to select the name input, I just need to make sure that in my index HTML, and this is very, very important. Whenever you work with form data, make sure that you add the name, because otherwise, functionality is not going to work. So for name, I have name is equal to name. For email, I have email. And of course, for password, you can probably already guess that I have a password. So if I want to select all three of them, yep, this is what I'll do. I'll go with form data dot get and then name, email and password. And essentially notice here, it gets me back the value of john. Now we can also add stuff to this form data one, I can go with append method. 
and effectively this is going to be the key and this will be the value so let me add here test value just so we can see that this is happening and i'll skip ahead and i'll just mention that yes of course we can remove the keys as well so if i'm adding here a test one once i run form data delete that's why we don't see anything over here so all the way in the bottom i have these entries and i'm just spreading it out just so we can see that the functionality that i'm showing you actually works so let me comment this one out let me click on register and now notice i have three values and the last one is going to be test and test value even though technically in here there is no such input and we already covered it i can remove so i can go with form data and dot delete and then i just need to specifically say which input i want to delete and we also have option to check whether the property exists so i can go with form data has and then in this case i'm looking for name and of course since i have the name that's why i get back true now all of this is nice but here's the thing whatever we're getting back from the methods that's not going to be a json one so if i go here with dot 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 and then form data and then entries and i spread it out essentially like i keep saying we'll have this array of arrays and technically you can send it with the http request but it depends on a server so if the server is not accepting that type of option then effectively you'll be sending empty values so it kind of makes sense to right away turn this into a straight up object and that way we don't need to worry about anything and the way we can do that is by using another method from javascript which is object and then from entries and in here essentially we pass in the array of arrays and this is what the method is doing it turns it into a full-blown object so in here notice i have array of arrays and then below it what do you know i have a proper object and with this object we can do whatever we want so we can right away post it to a server we can do some calculations and all that cool stuff and lastly let's just cover a typical setup so we want to select the form we want to set up the submit event listener and we want to of course prevent the default and first let's just pass in the current target into a form data then if i want to check for the empty values i can just spread out the form data dot values remember this one returned not the key value pairs but essentially just the values i spread it out i set it in the array and i can use the includes method on it so we quickly check whether there is an empty value if it is then we do something in my case we just return and then if everything is correct i just go with object from entries and i pass in the form data get back the object do something in this case i'm just logging and at the very end i just set it back to empty values 